Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. How's your day been? It's been bonkers hot today. In the studio, we do have, uh, we've got air conditioning. However, the air conditioning isn't set up at properly at the moment. We sort of pack it down for the winter because we know we're not going to use it. And I've not got it set up at the moment. Crumbs could really do with it today. Such a warm day. I've got all the doors open. I've got all the windows open. It is so hot today. It's just flipping crazy. However, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to crack on because that's the way we roll. Thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's all going on. It's all kicking off. So go check them out. I'm just about to upload a little video that George and I did just a little while ago. So if you want to check it out, then go to our social media. You're going to love it. And also, if you could give us a little follow, a little like, oh, well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Right now, I've got a supporter page. It is patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Because as you know, We've got a brand new podcast, and that is the one that we're working on at the moment. So, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Go check it out. Time now for another adventure with those Texas Rangers. This one was first broadcast on the 13th of April, 1952. Not what I had a bit of a tr- trouble there with the tongue, didn't I? Sorry about that. 13th of April, 1952. It's called Uncertain Death. <laughs> of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing, and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen, and you'll agree. And then there's the program of the heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then there's Music and Charm with Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday, chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Uncertain Death. It is shortly past 10 o'clock on a Wednesday night in July 1936. Six miles outside the town of Cambridge in east-central Texas, two elderly men approach the shore of a lake. <laughs> come on, come on, Ollie. we got to hurry. I'm walking as fast as I can. Them frogs ain't going to run away. That ain't the point, and you know it. Frogs for bass fishing got to be caught and put in a bait bucket 12 hours before they can be used. Oh, that superstition, George Warner. Ain't going to help it none going way over the other side of the lake, neither. There's plenty of frogs right here. No, you know these frogs ain't good for bass. Only frogs and bass will eat going to be caught on the other side where the turtles is. Oh, superstition is nothing but... Ollie. Huh? Uh, shine the light over there. Ain't that the game warden's car? It don't look nothing like it. Does too. I wonder what he's doing out here this time of night. Let's go see. Yeah, why don't you go poking your nose in other people's business? There ain't nobody in it. 
And it ain't the game warden's car. Here's two. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, shine the light down toward the show. What do you want? Yeah, there now, you see? Car belongs to that young couple sitting on the bank. Uh, sorry we disturbed you, folks. That's okay. Didn't mean to be shining that light on you. We thought you was a game warden. Yeah, sure. <laughs> How about that, Ollie? A young couple sparkling on a summer night. <laughs> Puts me in mind of when we was young and used to bring our gals out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the boat. You get in first and I'll shove off. Yeah. I'll roll. No, you won't. Neither. <laughs> You start rolling, it will be five minutes before you come complaining about it. We'll head for that patch of weeds near the cove. Best frogs in the lake come there nights. I still don't see no sense in going all the way over there to the other side. You'll see. Wait till we catch us some of them big mouth bass tomorrow. Oh, I sure hope we get some. Ain't nothing like big mouth bass for good eating. What's that? Sounds like them young people having some kind of squabble. Get back here. You better come back. That's shooting. We better get in the shore. Hey, George, if we go in there, he's liable to shoot us up too. Come on up here alongside of me. You better help roll. All right. But I still think... You quit thinking and roll. Dad, he's leaving, George. He's driving away. Keep rolling. You reckon he... Kill that girl? We don't even know it was him doing the shooting. He was the one yelling at her to come back, wasn't he? Yeah, come on, Ollie. Pull on that all. When the two men reached shore, they looked briefly around the area where they had seen the car. They found no one there and no indication of violence. Nevertheless, they decided to report the incident to the sheriff. After investigating the scene of the alleged shooting... The sheriff requested assistance from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and arrived at the lake just after dawn. The sheriff led him toward a spot at the edge of the water. What I wanted to show you is over here, Jace. First, I thought them two old fellas must have been hearing things, though. Are you still around, Sheriff? Over there with the crowd. Funny how excitement draws people like bees around a jam jar. You want to talk to George and Ollie? Yeah, in a few minutes. There you are. When I found this, I was pretty sure there really was a shooting here. Yeah. The blood, all right. George and all, they think it was a girl that was shot. Why? They heard the man yelling for her to come back, and then there was three, four shots. You figure she could have got up and crawled away after she was hit? That's yeah, not likely. Tracks indicate she was dragged, probably back the car. The two men witnesses recognize either of the people? No, it was too dark. The only thing they remembered was a car, a black four-door sedan. Well, I reckon we'll just have to wait for a missing persons report. If the girl really was killed, I... What's the matter? Mind hand me that branch, Sheriff? I think I see something in the water. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Can you make out what it is? I think it's... Yeah. It is. A woman's handbag. Shoulder strap's broken. That could have happened when she fell. Uh-huh. Uh, lipstick. Compact. Driver's license. Water didn't smear the type too much, did it? No. Name's Lucy Regan. Lucy Regan? Hmm. Well, that's a kindergarten teacher here in town. A real sweet kid. Nobody'd want to hurt a girl like that. We're not sure it's the girl who was hurt. Let's go find out. We drove back to town and went to Lucy Regan's rooming house. She wasn't there. Her landlady said she'd left at seven the night before and had not returned. She was fairly sure Lucy'd been out with Ken Bowman, a young cowhand from a nearby ranch. Sheriff and I went out to the ranch, arriving there about ten that morning. We learned that Bowman was with a crew setting up new fence posts about four miles from the ranch house. We took horses and started looking for them. There they are now, down at the bottom of the slope. Uh-huh. What's all the construction work over there by the next hill, Sheriff? That's a new county road. We've been waiting for it quite a spell. You'll be glad when they get it finished. Looks like they're cutting through part of this ranch. Just a corner. Reckon that's why they're setting up new fence posts. Which one of you fellas is Ken Bowman? Yo, over here. Who, 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 Charlie? Oh, boy, hold on. Uh, what's the matter? Ranger and I'd like to talk to you. Why, well, sure. 
Anything wrong? I want to ask you some questions about Lucy Regan. What about her? Were you out with her last night? Yeah? Why? Her landlady says she hasn't been back to the house since she left with you. That ain't true. I brought her back myself. What time was this? Early. About nine o'clock. She said she had a headache. She was lying, though. How do you mean? Ah, I've taken her out five, six times in the past few months. She always makes some kind of excuse to get back early. What's the matter? Didn't you two get along? We get along all right. Except when she starts acting like a school teacher. Telling me how I should talk. When you brought her home, did you take her up to the house? No. She got out of the car in front of the house. Said she didn't want me to come in. She probably had another date waiting for you inside. Last time I'm taking her out. Where'd you go after you took Lucy home? Oh, no place special. Evening was already ruined. I drove around a while, and I come back to the ranch. Did you go out to the lake? Uh-uh. I've been near the lake in weeks. Look, Ranger, why are you asking all these questions? We're afraid Lucy might have been murdered. Murdered? Just because she don't show up one morning? <laughs> she goes over to the library in Bingham a lot. Maybe that's where she's gone. See some of them college fellas. Maybe so, but you were the last person she was seen with. Oh, look, Ranger, like I say, I took the girl out five or six times. I hardly even know her. Why'd you pick on someone else? What color's your car, Bowman? My car? Oh, it's black. What's that got to... Four-door in? sedan? Yeah. Why? Where is it now? Back at the ranch house. Suppose you stop work for a while. We'd like to see your car. <laughs> That is. Ain't much of a car. On a cowpoke's pay, it's good as I can buy. Mind if I look inside? Go ahead. How'd you get the blood on the back seat? Blood? Well, I don't see no blood. Looks like you tried to wash it off. How'd it get there? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. About a month ago, I went out shooting rabbits. I got a couple and put them on the back seat. Funny you didn't put something under them before you set them in the car. I did. Had him in a burlap sack. Blood must have soaked through. You sleep in one of the bunkhouses over there? That's right. We'd like to take a look at your bunk. Hey, look, what's this all about? Some girl goes out of town without telling nobody, so right away you come picking on me. Just because I was out with her a couple of times. Including last night. Sure, including last night. That still you ain't show no... show us your bunk now? All right. You're welcome to look at anything you want. Thanks. You know, if you really think something happened to Lucy, why don't you go talk to some of them college boys you runs with? We'll check on them later. Where's your bunk? Right here. First one. Let me see what's in that suitcase under the bunk. Okay. Well, go ahead and look. This your pistol? Yeah. You cleaned it recently, haven't you? This morning, I like a clean gun. When was the last time you used it? I don't know. Maybe a month ago. Time I shot rabbit. Any special reason for cleaning it this morning? No. Just thought it needed cleaning. You're trying awful hard to prove I had something to do with Lucy's murder, ain't you, Ranger? We're not sure she's dead. Yeah, but if she is, you're sure going to try and pin it on me, ain't you? We'll all get along better if you'll take that chip off your shoulder, Bowman. I ain't got a chip on my shoulder. I just don't like to be pushed around. I keep telling you, I hardly know Lucy Riggs. There's a suit hanging over here. Is it yours? Yeah. Did you wear it last night? Sure. It's the only suit I got. Did you know there was blood on the edge of the sleeve? What? Is that rabbit blood too, Bowman? What? How do I know? Blood's blood, ain't it? Not after it gets to our lab. They can tell in a hurry if it's animal or human blood. I want to take this suit in the back seat of your car along. Sure, take them. Frame it right down the line. I bet you if I wasn't a cowhand and had a lot of money, you wouldn't treat me this way. Now, you look Just here, a minute, you... Sheriff. Bowman... I'm going to lay the cards right on the table. Lucy Regan's disappeared. From information we have, I'd say it's a good bet she's dead. I didn't kill her. Maybe not. But you were with her last night. A car like yours was seen at the place where we think Lucy was shot, and there's blood in your car and on your suit. Why well, you now look? I know all this looks bad, but I didn't kill Lucy. I didn't kill her. What I have to do to prove it to you? I know a good way to begin. Well, how? We've got a machine at Austin called a polygraph, better known as a lie detector. We can't force you to take the test. But if you do, it could help to put you in the clear. Well, I'm not afraid of your lie, detective. I'm telling the truth. You want me to take this test? I'd sure like you to. Well, all right. Just wait till I tell the boss I have to go to Austin. Then I'm ready for any test you want to give me. Oh, now, 
I start the machine again, I'm going to ask you some more questions. You just answer yes or no. All right. You live near Cambridge, Texas? Yeah. You know Lucy Regan? Yeah. Did you eat breakfast this morning? Yeah. Do you own a black four-door sedan? Yeah. Did you shoot Lucy Regan? No. Did you come to Austin in the plane? Yeah. Were you out at Brandt Lake last night? No. You know who shot Lucy Regan? No. All right. I think that'll be all. What's it say? Well, you have to ask the ranger about that. If he wants to tell you, it's up to him. I got a right to know what it says. Come on, let's go in the next room. I don't see why you won't tell me what it says. It's my test in it. I got a right to know. All through? All through. He won't tell me what it says, ranger. You'll know soon enough. Sheriff, take Bowman into that office across the hall. I'll be along in a minute. Sure, come on, Bowman. Now, look, you said I didn't have to take this test. Now you won't tell me. How about it? Well, I ask him all the questions. Look at the graph. Now, here's where I asked him if he shot Lucy Regan. And here, if he was out the lake last night. Uh-huh. Don't know what you got on him, Jace, but according to this, that boy's lying. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. An investment in boys is an investment in America's future. The confident, trained, and respected citizen of tomorrow is the restless, untrained, and eager youth of today. By pointing his footsteps in the right direction and guiding him along the straight road of healthy living... By wholeheartedly sponsoring and supporting boys' clubs, we can build good citizens with strong, healthy bodies, boys who are honest and have a respect for property and individual rights, and we can gradually erase the social stigma of juvenile delinquency. Boys' clubs are sponsored in each community by non-sectarian, non-profit organizations of public-spirited adults who operate the clubs for the benefit of the boy members. Actually, the need today is for more boys' clubs. Let's all pitch in and help build the citizens of tomorrow. Let's provide recreation and companionship. Let's sow our seeds on good ground. Give them root so that they spring and grow up to full maturity. And now, back to the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Uncertain Death. kept Ken Bowman at headquarters while the lab tested his suit and the back seat of his car. A little after four that afternoon, the lab called and said the blood on both the upholstery and the sleeve of his suit was human blood. Bowman hardly batted an eye when we told him the news. There's one thing for sure. You were somebody else that sure trying to frame me. You know better than that. What about the lie detector, Bowman? That shows you weren't telling the truth. Oh, that's a lot of hogwash. You sure can't make me believe that thing never misses me. There was human blood in your car and on your sleeve. Where'd it come from? How do I know? Maybe I cut myself. You sure it wasn't Lucy's blood? You sure you didn't shoot her? You keep on asking that, Range, and I keep telling you. I wasn't the only one who went out with her. Now I want to go back to Cambridge. As soon as the pilot calls and says the plane's ready. You had no right bringing me here in the first place. You didn't have to come along. I told you that. And while we're waiting, suppose you answer a few more questions. But I told you everything I know. How many times are you going to make... Probably the pilot. You want me to get it, Jay? Uh-huh. Why'd you lie to us about the blood in your car? Yeah, I didn't lie. Why do you keep on asking? It was human yeah, blood. Right, How'd it get it. there? You got no one else to pick on. That's why you keep asking me questions. That was a lab, Jase. What'd they say? Said they found different kinds of dust and soil particles in Bowman's suit. They'll do a detailed analysis if you want it. That depends on you, Bowman. What do you mean? Why does it depend on me? Because we think you buried Lucy Regan's body somewhere. And when you did, you got soil particles on your clothes. What? What can you prove from there? I think it lead us to where Lucy's body's buried. Oh, how? The lab has samples of soil from every part of Texas, thousands of samples. They'll compare them with the particles found in your suit. It may take time, but we're not going to stop until we find that body. Now, how about it, Bowman? All right. I'll save you the trouble. I killed her. I shot her last night. Where was this? At the lake. We had a fight. She was running away. I shot her. 
Then I put a body in the car. Where'd you bury her? I didn't bury her. I drove down to the Lake Narrows. You know, Sheriff, where the bridge is. I waded a body down with rocks and threw off the bridge. Can you show us where it is? Yeah. yeah I can show you. Sheriff, will you go across the hall and tell them we want two witnesses? Ready to take down Ken Bowman's confession. Bowman repeated in front of two witnesses and a stenographer what he'd already told us. I requested headquarters to supply us with a diver to help locate Lucy Regan's body in the lake. We returned to Cambridge, arriving after midnight. By five the next morning, we'd set up a diving raft. At daylight, the diver was lowered into the water at the spot Bowman indicated. I stayed on the raft with a telephone. What's taking him so long? Why can't he find her? How about it, Joe? See anything? Nothing here, Chase. I'm out as far as I can go. You sure this is a place you threw the body, Bowman? Of course I'm sure. What do you say, Jase? Hold it a second, Joe. Bowman, where'd you get the rocks to weight down the body? Well, I, I reckon was from over there. You carried them all the way over here? I don't know, Ranger. It was dark. Maybe it... Yeah, that's right. I remember now. I was down the other end of the bridge. Stand by to come up, Joe. We're going to try another spot. Not a thing. Hold on. Bowman, we've been looking around this bridge for seven hours. Are you sure you put Lucy's body in the water here? Oh, Ranger, I thought I did. I, I don't know. Wait I... a minute. There's another bridge a mile further down. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe that's the one you meant. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it is. It'll be dark soon, Jace. Looks like we'll have to give it up for today. Yeah. But it must be here, Ranger. I, I remember everything now. Yes, I do. I, I was right on the corner of that bridge, right up there. Can you hear me, Chase? Go ahead. Nothing in this area. If we're going on, we'll have to get some lights. Now stand by to come up, Joe. That's all for today. Sheriff, put Bowman in the boat. We're going back to the car. How long can that diver stay with us, Jase? As long as we need him, I'll call headquarters and say we want him for at least tomorrow. I sure hope we find that body. Yeah, sure. You've got to find Lucy's body to keep me in jail, don't you? We'll find it tomorrow or the next day. We're going to keep looking until we do find it. Ah. Uh, well, it's too bad you have to look for it without me, ain't it? What? But tomorrow you'll be looking for Lucy's body and I'm going back to the ranch. Are you crazy? No, no. But you are if you try to hold me. You're not forgetting you signed a confession, are you, Bowman? Confession? What confession? Now, look here. You signed a confession in front of two witnesses that you killed Lucy Regan. Well, sure I did. Because you made me. You made me say I killed Lucy, but I didn't kill her. You're going back on your confession. Is that what you're trying to say, Bowman? Wait a minute. I heard this boy with my own ears. He said he shot Lucy Regan and threw a body in the lake. Did I? What body? <laughs> There never was a bite. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I put Bowman back in his cell, Jake. Good. We let him stay there tonight anyhow. Yeah, and he don't want to stay there at all. He started howling like a coyote when I told him now we were holding him for obstructing justice. Yeah, it was some wild goose chase he led us on today. How about that? First, he says he did kill her. Let us look for the body. Knows it ain't where we're looking, then says he didn't kill her. We gonna let him get away with that? Not if I can help it. We gotta find Lucy Regan's body. Yeah, if we don't, that confession of his ain't worth a thing. Why do you figure he did it? Somehow I feel he's stalling for time. He must have some reason for wanting us to go off on a false lead. But why? I just don't get it. It's gotta be something he did with the body. Something that made him feel he'd be safe after a couple of days' time. And it beats me. Wait a minute. You remember when it was he confessed? Well, it was just after I took that call from the lab. Yeah, before that, nothing faced him. The lie detector, the blood didn't even bother him. But as soon as I started talking about soil particles, he folded up. What's that sound like to you, Sheriff? Could be he didn't want the lab to go any further with that analysis. Uh-huh. And it's up to us to find out why. I'm going to call Austin and have him analyze every grain of soil they found in that boy's suit. <laughs> I phoned the lab. They said they'd analyze the soil particles and give us an answer as quickly as possible. We waited the whole night. At 7 the next morning, we went across the street to a restaurant to get some breakfast. We left word to have a call transferred there. Ten minutes later, it came through. 
I spoke to the lab technician and walked back to the table where the sheriff was sitting. Anything interesting, Jase? Maybe. Is there any granite around here, Sheriff? Nearest deposits Marble Falls, a couple of hundred miles away. Why? Well, they have found granite dust in the weave of Bowman's coat and some on the inside lining. Well, they do use granite for some of the construction work around here. Uh-huh. Like that road they're building out there near the ranch where Bowman works. Yeah. They use crushed granite gravel on the roadbed. That could be how Bowman got it on his suit. Wait a minute, though. Why'd he wear his good suit around a construction job? He wouldn't. Unless he had some special reason for being there. Well, I don't follow you. We know Bowman's been in a spot where he could watch the progress of that road for weeks. We also know there was some reason why he stalled us for a couple of days. Jeez. You think he buried that girl's body in the roadbed? That's the only thing that makes sense so far. But why would he dig up the gravel? Be much easier to bury her in the part of the road where they hadn't put gravel yet. That's just what I think he did. Picked a section of the road that was about to be graveled and started his digging. Then he could have left that coat of his on a pile of gravel nearby while he was working. More than likely. So that's why he was stolen. Figured we'd never find a body once that section was paved. Who's in charge of that construction job, Sheriff? The field engineer. Come on. Let's go find him. When we spoke to the field engineer out of the job, we got our first break. He told us that since Wednesday night when Lucy Regan had disappeared, a mile of road had been graveled. But a machinery breakdown late Thursday had prevented that section from being paved. He also informed us that a man answering Bowman's description had approached him early Thursday morning and asked a number of questions about the paving schedule. We were fairly sure now that we were on the right track. We had to know the exact location of the body, and only Bowman had that answer. Our problem was to get him to talk. We worked out a plan and then drove back to town. When we picked up Bowman, he thought we were taking him home. He said nothing until we moved onto the stretch of newly paved highway. This ain't the way to the ranch house. Nobody said it was. I, I thought you'd take me home. Where are you taking me? You'll find out. This is a new highway. Ain't finished yet. It don't lead nowhere. It could lead further than you think. What are you talking about, Ranger? Look, I won't get out. Stop the call in there. In a minute, Bowman. We're almost to the end of the paved section. At the end? You're crazy. It goes further than this. You can see those men up there, Bowman. Pavement don't go no further than that. But that's just where they were Thursday morning. Uh-huh. They had a machinery breakdown. Haven't been able to do any more paving until now. What's the matter, Bowman? I won't get out of here. I want to get out of here. You're getting out. Come on. Where are you taking me? Just over here, in the beginning of the gravel section. The part you thought would already be paved. What are you talking about? Look at it, Bowman. A mile of road covered with fresh gravel. And somewhere under that mile of gravel, Lucy Regan is buried. You're crazy. You buried her there. We're going to find her body and give her a decent burial. See those men over there, Bowman? Ranger, I... They're waiting until we give the word to start digging. If they have to, they'll dig up that whole mile of road. You can save us a lot of trouble by telling us exactly where you buried her. Ranger, I... All right. I kill it. I kill it. Show us where you buried her body. I want to marry her. She's the only girl I ever want to marry. I told her how crazy I was about her. She laughed at me. <laughs> she laughed at me. Where's the body, Bowman? Under there. Where? <laughs> Point out the spot. <laughs> There's a couple of big mistakes. I, I don't want to watch him dig Take me out of here. Please take me out of here, Ranger. All right, man. <laughs> start working by that stake over there. Right. Please take me out of here. I confess that I confess. Yeah. Please. You confessed twice. <laughs> this time we're going to make sure your confession holds up. <laughs> In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, you'll find more great entertainment all lined up for you on this NBC station. Next, it's The Big Show, with a star-studded guest list and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. And Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct The Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. And be sure to hear the hilarious Phil Harris and Alice Faye show, featuring the comedy antics of Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and Brother William. There's mirth and music with Phil and Alice in their delightful program. And remember, too, the Theater Guild on the Air will bring you another entertaining dramatization of an exciting play co-starring two of your favorite Broadway stars. 
Yes, Sunday is fun day on NBC because of the many fine shows sent your way to add to your listening pleasure. Later tonight, you'll want to hear Jack Parr on the $64 question as Jack asks the questions and gives away the money. So remember, for fine entertainment all the rest of the day, stay tuned to this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now back to the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Lucy Regan's body was discovered at the place Bowman had indicated. A ballistics check of three bullets found in her body proved they came from Ken Bowman's gun. Bowman, convicted of murder, was sentenced to life imprisonment at Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Harry Lang, Howard McNear, Ken Christie, and Ernie Newton. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gipney speaking. Next. Enjoy 90 minutes of comedy, drama, and music on The Big Show on NBC. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And don't forget, wow, we're at the end of another week. So it's Dad's Army tomorrow, going live from 5 p.m. GMT. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a supporter page, and I'm trying to put plenty of stuff on it. It's at patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Please do check it out. I'd appreciate that. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week. Each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.